In this podcast, I'm going to go through a little more detail in the procedure for creating the aspirin or acetyl salicylic acid. The chemical reaction is shown here again. These are organic structures, so I don't expect you to understand them fully. But the salicylic acid is one of your reactants, and this is a solid white acid. And we react it with the acetic acid, which is a solution in the presence of the catalyst sulfuric acid. When all of these reactants are mixed correctly, we should get the product aspirin and the side product water. We're going to end up varying our catalyst through several experiments to see the effect that it has on the yield or the percent aspirin that we make in this synthesis. The basic procedure is as follows. You will add the reagents, and again reagents is a simple fancy word for reactants. You'll add the reactants in the fume hood. You will measure out one gram to a hundredth of a gram, so you'll be quite precise in your mass of salicylic acid. You will place it in a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask and cover the crystals with two to two and a half milliliters of the acetic acid solution. This is quite a severe eye irritant, so you need to avoid eye and skin contact. Once you have these two reactants together, you're going to swirl your flask to wet the crystals and then add 2.5 drops of your catalyst concentrated sulfuric acid. At this point, you can take it out from the fume hood and gently heat the flask in a boiling water bath. And I will show you how to construct this water bath for 10 minutes, not letting the temperature get much above 70 degrees Celsius. Once you have reacted it, you will remove the flask from the hot water bath and add 15 milliliters of distilled ice water. This first production is to decompose any of your excess acetic acid. If you have excess acetic acid, that's an impurity in your synthesis and you need to destroy it. You destroy it by simply allowing it to set for five minutes in the ice water, and this will hydrolyze and destroy that extra acetic acid. You then will chill the solution in an ice bath, hoping that crystals of aspirin will form. These crystals will be your crude crystals. These are not your pure product. These are your first crude crystals. You will stir occasionally to continue to destroy that acetic acid. If for some reason you get an oil appearing instead of a solid, you're going to need to reheat the flask again in the hot water bath, but it's quite rare that you will get this to happen. So hopefully you will get these crystals to appear. If crystallization does not occur, you can encourage it by scratching the walls and bottom of the flask with a stirring rod or adding a piece of ice to the flask to speed up crystallization. If at this point you still don't have crystals, you and I are going to have to work together to get these crude crystals to appear. Once you have the crude crystals, you're going to transfer them, and this is your solid crude aspirin, onto filter paper. You don't want to lose any of that solid aspirin. You're going to transfer by adding small amounts of cold water and repeating until you've transferred all of these aspirin crystals onto the filter paper. And I will show you the filtration apparatus. You then will wash the crude crystals with 10 milliliters of ice water to, again, wash off any impurities. Once you have crystals on the filter paper, you're going to again transfer them now to a 100 ml beaker. So now you have your crude aspirin, and your job next is to, let's try spelling that crude, 
C-R-U-D-E instead of crud, your crude aspirin crystals will be dissolved in an ethanol water bath to purify them. So you'll transfer the crystals into a minimum volume of 10 milliliters of ethanol and warm it to about 60 degrees Celsius. Again, using a water bath or a hot plate. But since ethanol is quite flammable, you want to make sure this temperature stays well below 60 degrees Celsius. You then will add 25 milliliters of distilled water that it's also at 60 degrees Celsius into this solution. If a solid does form, you have to continue warming until it dissolves. Your point here is to dissolve those crude crystals completely into this ethanol water solution. And now you want to recrystallize them. But this time you want them to grow slowly. So you're going to cover the beaker with a watch glass, remove it from the heat, and allow it to cool slowly. And we mean overnight. By allowing it to cool slowly and not disturbing it, you're going to get these large, shiny, needle-like crystals of pure aspirin. Once we get this pure aspirin, we have more steps to go through. Again, we have more decanting, more filtering, more weighing, but we have created our pure aspirin. Partly, it can be identified by the appearance of these long, shiny, needle-like crystals. This is only one test of purity, but this is what we hope to achieve in our first synthesis.